In this series of videos, we will read the Care Certificate Workbooks, both what you need to know and what do you know now. This video covers Standard 12, Basic Life Support, what you need to know. And it's over to my colleague to read through this workbook. The Care Certificate, Basic Life Support, last updated September 2021, version 1.2. What you need to know. Standard 12, the Care Certificate Workbook. Legislation and Basic Life Support. Introduction. The information Standard 12 provides knowledge about the administration of basic life support. You should also be provided with practical training by your employer to be able to put the knowledge from this workbook into practice in order to be able to carry out basic life support competently. Basic life support, BLS, compromises the following elements. Initial assessment, airway maintenance and breathing, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. When approaching a casualty, an initial casualty assessment should be conducted. This initial assessment is called a primary survey. The primary survey is a systematic process of approaching, identifying and dealing with immediate and or life-threatening conditions. The primary survey can be remembered by the acronym Dr. ABCD. Further training, beyond the care, further training beyond the care certificate. Where an employee wishes to provide training that goes beyond these minimum requirements for the care certificate, such as a use of automated external defibrillator, AED, or an emergency first aid at work course, we would encourage this but these are not necessary in order to meet the requirements of the care certificate. Completion of the standard will not provide you with the competence to become a first aider. In order to achieve this, you would be required to undertake specific first aid qualifications within your workplace. Whether you need this qualification will be dependent on your job role and your employer's assessment of the first aid needs. Dr. ABCD. Danger, response, Airways, breathing, call 999, circulation, defibrillation, or defib. Let's have a look at D, danger. Prior to approaching the casualty, ensure the safety of the casualty, yourself, and any bystanders. Response. If possible, approach the casualty from their feet as this prevents hyperextension of the neck from a responsive casualty. Use the AVPU scale when checking the response. A. Alert. Is the casualty moving, talking? No. Proceed to V. V. Voice. Do they respond to speech? No. Proceed to P. P. Place. Place your hand on their shoulders and gently shake them, asking, Are you, over are you okay? Are you alright? If no response, then proceed to U. U. Unresponsive. Assume the casualty is unresponsive. Provided there is no further danger, leave in the position found and try to find out what is wrong. Get help if needed. A. Airways. Open the airways, place the casualty onto their back. Open the airway using the head tilt chin lift method. Place your hand on their forehead and gently tilt back the head with your fingertips under the point of the casualty's chin. Lift the chin to open the airway. B. Breathing. After opening the airway, look, listen and feel for normal breathing for no more than 10 seconds. Helpful hint. Noisy gasp in the first minutes after a cardiac arrest, a casualty may appear to fit and may be barely breathing or take infrequent slow noisy gasps. Do not confuse this with normal breathing. If in any doubt that breathing is normal, act as if not breathing normally and prepare to start CPR. C. Call 999. Circulation. Call an ambulance 999 or 112 and ask helper to call otherwise call yourself. Stay with the casualty when making a call if possible. Activate speaker function on the phone to aid communication with the ambulance service. Send someone to get an AED if available and staff are trained to use it. If you are on your own, do not leave the casualty. Start CPR. Casualty, not breathing. Commence CPR, 30 compressions, two breaths. 
depth of compression 5 to 6 centimeters at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Defibrillation. If an AED arrives, switch it on and follow the spoken or visual prompts. An AED or a defib is used in conjunction with CPR. Helpful hint. Compression only CPR. If you are unable, not trained to, or unwilling to give breaths for the casualty who is not breathing, chest compressions only. These should be a continuous rate of 100 to 120 minutes and a depth of 5 to 6 centimetres. Adult. The P in the acronym AVPU is sometimes referred to as pain, meaning to cause minor pain to see if the person responds. Examples include pinching the earlobes or the fingertips. If casualty is breathing normally but still unresponsive, place into the recovery position, if safe to do so. Check for further injuries, conduct a secondary service, survey. Check breathing regularly. If the casualty deteriorates or stops breathing normally, be prepared to do CPR immediately. Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation, CPR. CPR should be administered to a casualty who is not breathing normally and who shows no sign of life. CPR is a method of combining chest compressions with effective rescue breaths in order to artificially circulate blood and to put air into the lungs. The depth of the compressions is as follows. An adult, five to six centimeters, similar to the short side of a credit card using both hands. Child, one year to, to onset of puberty, compress at least one third of the child's depth of chest, five centimeters using one hand. Infant, zero to one years of age, compress at least one third of the chest depth, four centimeters using two fingers. The rate of compression should be 100 to 120 compressions per minute. 30 chest compressions should be administered prior to moving on to breaths, called expired air ventilation. After completing 30 chest compressions, two effective breaths should be administered directly into the casualty's mouth, or if it is in case of an infant, their mouth and nose. Each breath should take one second to complete and the casualty's chest should rise in, as if in normal breathing. This is known as effective rescue breathing. Turn your head and watch the chest rise and fall, then administer the second breath. Please note, CPR must be practiced in a simulated environment as part of the care certificate training arranged by your employer. The use of this workbook alone is not sufficient to provide you with the skills to perform CPR and is not sufficient to achieve the competencies required for the award of the care certificate. Dr. A, B, C, D. Danger. Prior to approaching the child or infant, ensure their safety, your safety, and the safety of bystanders. Response. Infant. Talk to the infant. Gently stimulate the infant. If a response is gained, check for further injuries, secondary survey, and contact the emergency services if required. Child. Talk to the child, gently stimulate the child and ask loudly, are you all right? If a response is gained, check for further injuries, secondary survey, and contact the emergency services if required. A. Airways. Open the airways. Place the infant or child on their back and open the airway using the head tilt chin lift method. Place your hand on their forehead and gently tilt back your head with your fingertips under the point of the infant's or child's chin. Lift the chin to open the airway. B. Breathing. After opening the airway, look, listen and feel for normal breathing for no more than 10 seconds. Helpful hint. Noisy gasps. In the first few minutes after a cardiac arrest, a casualty may be barely breathing or breathing infrequent, slow, noisy gasps. Do not confuse this with normal breathing. If in doubt that the breathing is normal, act as if, the if they are not breathing normally and prepare to start CPR. 
If the infant or child is breathing normally but still unresponsive, place into the recovery position if safe to do so. Check for further injuries, conduct a secondary survey. Check breathing regularly. If the casualty deteriorates or stops breathing normally, be prepared to commence CPR immediately. Call 999 Circulation. Call an ambulance on 999 or 112. Ask a helper to call, otherwise call yourself. If you are on your own, perform CPR for one minute before going for help. Five initial rescue breaths before starting chest compressions. Stay with the casualty when making the call if possible or if able to carry the infant or child while summoning help. Activate speak function on the phone to aid communication with the ambulance service. Send someone to get the AED if available. Casualty not breathing. Commence CPR with five initial rescue breaths 30 compressions, two breaths. Depth of compression, four centimeters for an infant, five centimeters for a child at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Defib, D. If an AED arrives, switch it on and follow the spoken or visual prompts. An AED is used in conjunction with CPR. Helpful hint. The free emergency telephone number across the UK is 999. It can be used to request the ambulance, police or fire service help and in some places also the Coast Guard and or local mountain rescue services. The 999 operator will ask what services you want to be put through. If you need to use a locked mobile phone whose unlock number you do not know, you should still be able to dial 999 on it. The European emergency number 112 also works in the UK. Calls to it will automatically divert to the 999 service. Obstructed airway, adult. The main aim of respiratory system is to supply oxygen to all parts of the body. Breathing is essential to life. The airway can be obstructed in a variety of ways, including foreign bodies, food or other items, allergic reactions, asthma, blood, vomit and infections. An obstruction can cause minor or major breathing difficulties and in severe circumstances may cause a casualty to become unconscious and unresponsive. Someone who is choking will have either a partial or complete obstruction of the airway. The severity of the blockage will determine the difficulty in breathing. Recognition. Grasping at the throat area. Difficulty in breathing and speaking. Difficulty in crying or making a noise. Redness of the face. Eyes enlarged and watering. Displaying distress. Treatment. This should not be carried out by any worker who has not su successfully completed formal practical training provided by their employer. Encourage the casualty to lean forward and cough. If the obstruction remains, administer a maximum of five sharp blows between the shoulder blades. If the obstruction still remains, administer a maximum of five abdominal thrusts or chest thrusts for an infant. If the obstruction is still not re relieved, call for help and continue alternating five back blows with five abdominal thrusts. Start CPR if the casualty becomes unresponsive. Support the casualty carefully to the ground. Immediately call the ambulance service. Begin CPR with chest compressions. Obstructed airway. An obstruction can cause minor or major breathing difficulties and, in severe circumstances, may cause the infant or child to become unconscious or unresponsive. Recognizing a choking infant or child, grasping at the throat area, difficulty in breathing and speaking in the case of a child, difficulty in crying or making a noise, redness of the face, eyes enlarged and watering displaying distress. With a complete obstruction, the infant may slow, may show the above signs, but also the skin color may develop a blue gray tinge. They will progressively get weaker and eventually they will become unconscious. Treating a choking infant. Consider the safest action to manage a choking child. If the infant is coughing effectively, 
then no external manoeuvre is necessary. Monitor continuously. If the infant's coughing is or becoming ineffective, shout for help immediately and determine the infant's conscious levels. Conscious choking infant. If the infant is still conscious but has absent or ineffective coughing, give back blows. If back blows do not relieve choking, give chest thrusts. This manoeuvre creates an artificial cough to increase the intrathoracic pressure and dislodge the foreign body. Back blows. Support the infant in a head downwards prone position to enlarge gravi to enable gravity to assist removal of a foreign body. A seated or kneeling first aider should be able to support the infant safely across their lap. Support the infant's head by placing the thumb of one hand at the angle low to the jaw and one or two fingers from the same hand at the same point on the other side of the jaw. Do not compress the soft tissues under the infant's jaw as this will exacerbate the airway obstruction. Deliver up to five back blows with the heel of one hand in the middle of the back between the shoulder blades. The aim is to relieve the obstruction with each blow rather than to give all five. Chest thrusts. Turn the infant into a head downward supine position. This is achieved safely by placing your free arm along the infant's back and encircling the back of the head with your hand. Support the infant down your arm, which is placed down or across your thigh. Identify the landmark for chest compression, lower sternum approximately a finger's breadth above the chest bone, lowest part of the breastbone. Deliver up to five chest thrusts. These are similar to chest compressions, but sharper in nature and delivered at a slower rate. The aim is to relieve the obstruction with each thrust rather than to give all five. Following chest thrusts, reassess the infant. If the object has not been expelled and the infant is still conscious, continue in the sequence of back blows and chest thrusts. Call out or send for help if still not available. Do not leave the child at this stage. If the object is expelled successfully, assess the infant's clinical condition. It is possible that the part of the object may remain, re, may remain in the respiratory tract and cause complications. If there is any doubt, seek medical assistance. Helpful hint. Under no circumstances should abdominal thrust be performed on an infant. These must be replaced by chest thrusts. Treating a choking child. Consider the safest action to manage the choking child. If the infant is coughing effectively, then no external manoeuvre is necessary. Monitor continuously. If the infant's coughing is or becoming ineffective, shout for help immediately and determine the infant's conscious level. Conscious choking child. If the child is still conscious but has absent or ineffective coughing, give back blows. If back blows do not relieve choking, give abdominal thrusts. These manoeuvres create an artificial cough to increase intrathoracic pressure and dislodge the foreign body. Back blows. Back blows are more effective if the child is positioned head down. A small child may be placed across the rescuer's lap as with an infant. If this is not possible, support the child in a forward leaning position and deliver the back blows from behind. Give five sharp blows between the shoulder blades with the heel of the other hand. If the back blows fail to dislodge the object and the child is still conscious, use abdominal thrusts. Abdominal thrusts for children over one year. Stand or kneel behind the child. Place your arms under the child's arms and encircle their torso. Clench your fist and place it between the navel and the rib cage. Grasp this hand with your other and pull sharply inwards and upwards. Repeat up to four more times. If the obstruction is still not relieved, continue alternating five back blows with five abdominal thrusts. Start CPR if the child becomes unresponsive. Support the child carefully to the ground. Immediately call the ambulance service. Begin CPR with chest compressions. Confidentiality. 
Anyone who is responsible for the storage of records and for information must be aware of their responsibilities under the Data Protection Regulation 2016, which is, has been updated. And if relevant freedom and if relevant Freedom of Information Act FOI 2000. Record keeping. Depending on your specific job role, there will be information and records that will be required on completion should an infant, child or adult be involved in an accident or become ill in the health or social care setting. This recorded information in the accident book can help to identify trends, help to control health and safety risks, be used for reference for future first aid needs assessments, prove, prove useful for investigations. Please refer to your employee's policy and procedures and forms if you need further clarity, speak to your manager. Refresher training. Refresher training should be conducted regularly. It is good practice to complete a refresher training on basic life support annually. This is not a condition of completion of the care certificate. Great work on finishing this What You Need to Know booklet. In this series, we also have the What You Need to Know activity booklet that follows on from this video.